Hey, welcome back to the Octa Master course. I want to thank you all for continuing to watch this course and uh, hopefully you've shared it and liked uh, some of the videos. In uh, today's video, what I'm going to talk to you about is three different areas. So um, I'm in the Octa portal right now and over here in security, we are going to focus on today is we want to get to setting up a global session policy, but we need to have a conversation about networks and behavior detection. So let's first start off and talk a little bit about what behavior detection is. At its core, behavior detection is a security mechanism designed to identify unusual patterns of behavior that could indicate potential security threats, such as compromised accounts or insider threats. Okta leverages advanced machine learning algorithms to monitor and analyze user behavior in real time. So this is behavior detection page uh, when you get to the Okta screen. And basically what behavior detection is, is you know how it works is Okta collects data on user behavior, right? And these are the different behaviors, like such as login, location, device types, and typical you know access times, right? Over time, it builds a comprehensive profile of what normal behavior looks like for each other, each user. And when an action deviates significantly from the established pattern, Okta flags it as suspicious. So right here, um, what we get within the Okta uh, page is we have a couple different options. So it's this new city, right? Location and granularity um, and evaluates against past. So it says the last 20 authenticators, authentications, right? You could change this number if you want to, if you want to bump it up, uh, you could lower it down. It's totally up to you over here, a new country. You have the same thing. So you could come here and say, okay, location, granularity, country. Um, and you could change this too, to be honest with you. And then you could do what you want to do here, right? So if we wanted to create a new behavior detection, we could come up here and we can add our triggers ourselves, right? So you could go here to IP and you could put the name in and then you can put against authenticators. So it's authentications. So it's like, how many authentications do you have um, within your organization or that user? And then they say, okay, you know, this is anomaly. You know, you know, we don't sign in from, you know, Mexico, right? So that's a way of making sure your environment is safe. So uh, for this, it's, you know, very similar to how Azure does their things, right? And a lot of other platforms do that where, you know, you have this user risk policy, right? Or sign in risk policy where people are signing in. And that's really how you want to make sure uh, you keep your environment safe because if I'm signing into work, I'm most likely signing in from the same location all the time, right? Uh, for at least most of the time I'm signing into the same location. So one thing I do want to talk about is that it is important um, to use behavior detection. It's very powerful, as you can see. Um, but the thing is, it should be used in conjunction with other security methods, such as multi-factor authentication and strong password policies to create a robust security posture. So this is just one pillar of keeping your environment safe. So I'm not going to, you know, this is pretty straightforward how you create a new behavior detection. Uh, you can go to device and then you can do against whatever amount of authenticators. So um, that behavior detection, but I do want to jump into networks neck next because this one is very powerful and stuff that you can do with your networks. So if I look over here and I see in my network and I go to add zone, I can add zone based on IP zone or a dynamic zone. So let's talk a little bit about what's the difference. So a static zone, right, is uh, static zones are defined by fixed set of IP addresses or IP ranges. These zones are predefined, pre-configured, and remain constant unless manually updated. Uh, a use case is static zones are typically used known for known stable environments such as corporate offices, specific data centers, or any fixed location within a stable IP range. Uh, the configuration administrators manually enter the IP addresses or ranges to define a static zone. And then example, a static zone could be used for a corporate headquarters within the IP range. So you have dynamic zones. The dynamic zones are more flexible and can be defined by a combination of factors, including IP addresses, geographic locations, and other contextual data. They can adapt based on real-time conditions. Uh, use case would be a dynamic zones are useful for environments where IP addresses might change frequently or for broader geographic regions. They are ideal for mobile workforces, remote employees, or cloud-based environments. Dynamic zones leverage contextual information and adaptive policies that define access controls. This can include the user's IP address, geographic location, device type, and other real-time factors. An example, 
A dynamic zone could be defined for all users accessing from the United States, which could dynamically include any IP addresses within the United States. Okay, so if you were to set this up, right, so IP zone would be something like, you know, you could say corporate. So I could say corporate office, right, and then I could put a bunch of IP addresses here. Sorry that this is vagued out, but this is coming up with my public IP address, so I'm definitely blocking that. Um, over here, you could put whatever range, right? So you can do anything from like 192.168.0.1.0. And then you could do like a slash 24 or something like that, right? So you could, whatever your IP address is, you would do it, right? So you probably have something like in your corporate office, like, you know, something like 172. Dot, you know, I don't know. 120 right i'm just making something up but this is how you would set it up so whatever your corporate office is you would put down that information um or 10.10.1.0 something like that um and then right here you would just click on save you could put trusted proxy server information and if anything you need to put in there um down here it just says dynamic zones and behaviors you click on it it will bring you to a website and then threat insights automatically allows access from configured proxies for your organization. So it just, it'll bring you to a uh, pages, a link when you click on that, and then you just click on save. And then here I have another dynamic zone here, excuse me, an IP zone, um, and it's showing up for what's gonna be allowed, right? That's gonna be our corporate office and we can use that to safeguard. Now, dynamic zone, <coughs> we could do a little different. We could say blocked countries. And there's something that I use within Azure, the same thing, you could do block countries for, uh, if, you're, if you're doing business in like a certain amount of states, right? If you have like a smart startup company and you know, most of your staff is in, I don't know, New York, you could block countries, right? You could block a lot of different places. If they're not gonna be there, you could just block it. Now, some of you may be saying, well, you know, if you're a threat, uh, threat uh, actor, what can you do? You can literally just, you know, VPN. Yeah, but we're gonna try to give, put as much hurdles in front of their goalpost, which is to hack us, right? So he says block access from IPs matching conditions listed in the zone. All right, and then I can say IP, I can say any, I can say location. This is where I can now put down the different countries. So I can say Afghanistan, I don't care. As long as it's Afghanistan, I can do it. And I can add a bunch, right? So let's just say you could do something like, you know, um, China, you could block, you could say go down, you could say Europe. You could block and you could keep going and going, right? Um, you know, I'm not here for any political debates, obviously. I'm just throwing in any countries, right? Um, that's there. I What I used to do was go to the FBI list. Um, I still do and see what countries that we should be blocking, right? So that's some of the stuff that I've done um, before. You could use that as well. And down here, it says separate entries with a new line, the ISPs. Um, or you just want to block, right? And then you could say save. So then now you have your block countries, right? And this says zone type dynamic block list, right? And there's also another list here for blocking as well. So um, now let's get to what we really wanted to get to in the very beginning, which is a global session policy. So use this policy to ensure the user's session length so that users can switch between apps with ease. You may also apply blocking rules to your entire org or require org password or two-factor authentication. So there is a default policy here, but we can get a little bit more granular. So if I add a policy, I can call it whatever I wanna call it. Let's just say I am going to use it for on-prem medical staff. So I can do that and I can say, you know, I have medical staff that's on prem, but I don't want to have to get, have them, you know, doing the same amount of putting the same amount of energy uh, in order to get onto the corporate network. And I can assign it to a group if I want to, or I can just say create policy and rule, right? So I can assign it to any group. So what's the group do I want to assign it to? So I'm going to assign it to on site medical, right? I just created that group. And now I can call this on site rules um, and I can exclude users I can say if users IP is in zone right we already just did our zones and I can say corporate office there you go right um, and any identity provider is Okta 
all right and then so authentication via and i can leave it as any and behavior right and this is the thing about behaviors this is all the different behaviors so let's just say i type new i can have all these different things here right so we're going to go through this again but i'll leave it the way it is and risk is any risk um and or i could say risk is low right then access is allowed right any factor used to meet the authentication policy requirements or i could just say password if i wanted to and multi-factification is not required because it's on-prem and I trust it. And in Okta Global Session Lifetime, I could say set in a maximum session lifetime, reduce the risk of session cookie misuse or hijacking. So I could say no set limit, or I'm like, you know, I still wanna have a limit, but I'll say I'll have the limit for, I don't know, you know, eight hours, right? So they don't have to worry about having to deal with certain things during when they come into work. They had to re-authenticate every day. Now, Okta, global session idle time, you know, we're doing HIPAA, so we still need to make sure that we have that idle time. So I believe for HIPAA, it's five minutes, so we can still keep it to five minutes. And then over here, Okta, global session cookie persist across browser sessions. If enabled, is selected when a user reopens their browser and their session is still active, they won't be accessed sign in again. So this is the persistent browser session. This is something similar to what I've done in the past with Azure with conditional access. So you, I would definitely disable this, right? If you can enable if you want to, but what happens is if they're signed in in one browser and then you go somewhere else, they'll still be signed in. So I'll leave it as disabled and I could go ahead and create this rule. Okay, so we already we have that session policy set up. We can set up another one where we can do something for remote workers, right? So we can say remote workers and we can come down here, remote workers, and then we can go to a group and we have a remote workers group, we can create a policy. And here we'll have a remote workers rule and we're not excluding anybody. Um, and then right here, if IP is, we well, won't be in zone, right? Um, we can do anywhere, right? Cause that would make more sense. And identity provider is uh, Okta and authentication is any, and we select behavior and we're like, hey, you're remote workers, but we wanna make sure that you, if you're coming from a new city a new geolocation, our new device, right? And a risk is any risk. We can do it if it's high or medium, but we could do any if we want to, right? It might get triggered too much. So we could say medium and access is allowed, but we could say we're gonna require MFA. For, so it says when behavior includes new device, users will be prompted for MFA, which is great because it's a new device. And then we can say global session timeout, set limit. We're definitely setting the limit for you guys. And we're not doing days. We're gonna make sure that you are re-authenticate every six hours. I don't know, we're just making stuff up at this point. Um, but we're just trying to be as restrictive as possible. And then session idle time, we definitely don't want you idle for too long. So we could say we give you 10 minutes, right? We could do it that way. I know we did five, cause we're staying with the HIPAA thing. Um, and then we could just make sure it's disabled and then we create a rule and then now we have a remote workers global session policy So that's exactly how you would go about setting it up and doing things for your organization and then also being able to um, Scope those policies out to specific groups But you need to make sure that if you're gonna do it this way that your specific groups have the right people in there Because that's who it's going to apply to so you can set all this up But if they're not in the right group, it's just not gonna work correctly so that was a jam-packed video. We were able to cover uh, behavior detection networks and then also global session policies. So I wanna thank you all for watching this video. Uh, please continue to watch the Okta Master Course. Um, definitely have more uh, information to provide to you all. So thank you again for watching. If you haven't done so already, please smash that like and subscribe button. Here at Cloud Scholars, my goal is to get you from scholar to consultant and of course, consultant to expert. Thank you and see you next time.